Sonic. Lab. TDD. Right, let's get one thing straight. I've been saying Moog wrongly for so many years, I know it's supposed to be pronounced Moog, that I'm unlikely to get it right in the course of this review. So let's just pretend, for the purposes of this review, that every time I say Moog, I'm actually saying Moog, and we can just move on and forget about it. Why? Why am I going to be saying this? Well, because we have the Moog Slim Fatty in for review. This is a small, single voice, 100% analog, subtractive synthesizer from Moog. It's a thing of a beauty, very solidly built, 19 inch rack mount, you can get ears for it. Solid metal casing, quite thick. Um, let's take a look at the front and rear panels now. So here it is on our special deluxe rotatey cake stand. Uh, we'll turn the lights on, you can see the nice light show, plenty of status light indicators. There we go, there are four rotary pots here. These are actually pots rather than rotary encoders because they've got an end stop with an indicator um, to show you where the value is. Uh, these, it works, it's quite an intriguing ed editing system, very intuitive, you press for whichever parameter that you're currently want to control and then dial in the level of the parameter. Same with the oscillators. Uh, if we go to wave, we can turn and select between the waves, filter, ADSR, etc, etc. Makes perfect sense. Pretty sturdy pots, nice and visible, very bright lights. I've also got a master section here which allows you to access some of the uh, global functions and various other deeper edit parameters. Uh, this has got a clicky, rotating, click style knob here and then there's the master fine tune which can be disabled it's actually quite sensitive finally at the end we have volume control with an actual a global output on off round the back it's 120 to 240 power supply midi in and through We've also got control inputs for CV control of this unit, so we can control it from, say, a Mogafoga or other analog gear. That's uh, gate, pitch control voltage, filter control voltage, and volume control voltage. And then audio input for processing the external audio via the filters, output in mono, and a headphone output. There's also a USB interface which gives you MIDI control over the unit via USB from your door. So, if you're anything like me, the first thing you want to do is listen to the waves and just hear what the raw stuff sounds like. So let's just do that right now. So what we've got here is a wide open filter and we're just listening to one of the waves, so. This is a triangle. The oscillators are continuously variable through to saw, pulse, square, and they go right down and right up. No aliasing there, of course. So now if we bring in another oscillator, slightly detuned, we can also sync the two. some fairly serious tones and this is just the two oscillators in sync everything else wide open nothing else going on of course we've always got to look at the filter i mean the moog filter is legendary isn't it so here is the actual this is wide open very nice and smooth this is uh, high uh, resolution control of the filter you probably can't hear the bottom end here but it's absolutely massive i can assure you Let's get some resonance going on, it will self-oscillate. It's the proper Moog sound, all right? Let's really ranch it up. But there's another trick up the sleeve. Uh, as in the old Mini Moogs, uh, you used to be able to drive, you take the headphone output and plug it back into the audio input to sort of double up and overdrive the filter and this is mimicked here so we'll just open the filter up again and then we'll add some overdrive you hear it really buzzing away it really kind of comes into its own when you drop the filter cut off. you get this kind of warm 
smudgy, fuzzy sound. Really, really nice feel to that. Quick look at the LFO as well. We've got the uh, sawtooth going to the filter here, uh, at full amount. We've got some really nice slow to real, right up into the audio rates there, so you can get some really extreme stuff. Uh, other routings here allow you to take from the square wave, uh, the inverse sawtooth, and the triangle wave. Also, you can take the filter envelope and route that to any of these destinations here. Incidentally, in the master section, you go into the advanced preset parameters, and you can also change the modulation source five and six, which are these two here, to be noise. So you can actually use noise as a modulation source, although unfortunately you can't use noise as an oscillator wave. If you route it through to the filter at maximum amount, you can get a sort of dirty noise, and that's about as good as it gets in terms of uh, getting a noise source. So I'm not going to go through every single synthesis parameter on the Slim Fatty, um, but suffice to say that because it's, this is a real analog synthesizer, you interact with it in a different way. It enables you to build things from the, from the ground up. There's no effects or anything, so you're going to focus on the raw sound. And the raw sound is great. It's a Moog. It's got Moog oscillators. It's got a Moog filter. What more could you ask? Well, the thing is, is when you pair this up with something else, uh, some other instrumentation, you start to get into the kind of performance aspect of it, and that's where it really starts to shine. So you no doubt heard some arpeggiator patterns in there. Well, that's because this has actually got an arpeggiator in it as well, as well as a number of other deeper synthesis and tweakable parameters that you access via the little LCD and menu. We should take a look at some of those now. Hit the master menu button. That brings up the uh, all these uh, different menu options inside the Slim Fatty. Uh, we want the advanced presets. That's going to take us to arpeggiator. I'll hit enter. That brings up all the individual uh, parameters for the arpeggiator, clock source, clock divide, that sort of thing, uh, pattern, uh, only down uh, order of the notes they were played and up, so fairly basic, but still quite a useful function. To enable the arpeggiator, you just go into preset mode and then press down on the pot and the little A will show up. If you want to latch it, you press the enter button. That's arpeggiator on and latch mode enabled. Uh, while we're here, uh, we should also have a quick look at the way that you can set up the pot. In pass through mode, I have to actually go through the value to start tweaking it. In snap mode, it jumps to it immediately as soon as I touch it. And in track mode, when I turn the knob, it just automatically begins to increment or decrement. Going back to preset mode, there's a couple of cool functions in the modulation section. Pressing and holding the amount button allows us to dial in the amount of modulation from the pot rather than from the mod wheel, which I'm doing here. That's handy if you want to set up some pre-modulations without using the mod wheel. Uh, LFO rate, um, pressing and holding that, gives it tap tempo function. So if I tap it quite fast, it then sets the speed of the LFO. <laughs> You can also process mono external audio signals uh, via the audio input. I've got a drum beat going in. Nice and clean, I can force the input up, give it a bit more crunch. It's designed to distort a little bit. I can increase that by putting the overload thing on. Then I'm starting to get... I'll bring the resonance up a bit. I can really crunch stuff up, that's pretty nice. It doesn't have to be limited to beats, though. You get some pretty crunchy sounds out of... ...whatever you put into it, really. I must admit, I wasn't expecting quite so much dirt and grunge and kind of grime from this thing. I thought it would just be giving me loads of bottom end, which it does tons of. Also does all the other classic Moogie things, the lead lines and what have you. Uh, anything missing, I suppose, is there's no noise, uh, white noise as an oscillator source. That's a bit of a shame. And of course, um, in terms of price, it's not a cheap instrument. I guess what you're paying for is the Moog brand here and of course the fact that it's 100% analog. At 699 UK pounds, 
849 euros and 845 US dollars. This is a premium instrument. You will find it cheaper if you shop around. Why not support your local music store while you're at it? But basically, this is a Moog. It's the cheapest Moog you can get. And when you hear it for the first time, you sort of understand why Moog is sort of held in such high esteem. Hey!